Welcome back, everybody, to the Oakland Days franchise. We are 41 games into Season 5, and right now, we're sitting at 20 and 21. I did hope we'd be in a little bit stronger position at this point, and now is the time of year where you want to start adjusting and looking at your weaknesses and trying to shuffle the roster to try and steer the team in the right direction. Now, last episode, I posed an option that was not popular, which was to send Aaron Don down to AAA. Don has struggled this year, to put it lightly. He's only hitting 201, he's slugging 250, and just hasn't been a very positive force in the offense. And that's why I wanted to move him down. Now, I get he probably wouldn't develop down there. He's an 81 overall. The only way he's going to get better is against big league competition. After looking at all that feedback, perhaps sending Aaron Don down isn't the best thing for him. However, I still think he needs some of his playing time cut for the time being. So to begin this episode, we will be bringing up Josh Baez, who has hit 259, eight home runs down at AAA. I've been looking for him to step up his play after declining significantly last year. And it looks like so far at AAA, he has figured things out again. So I want to get Baez in this starting lineup. Now, I thought about what corresponding roster move to make. You know, Denzel Clark, I don't think, deserves to be sent down or anything. And Juan Guerrero plays a couple positions that other players don't. So he's a good utility backup. I think we're going to try going down to a seven-man bullpen right now. And we're going to be waving Mason Miller and see if he passes through to go back down to AAA. I think that there's a pretty decent chance that someone does try to claim Miller, but I'm willing to take that risk. He's 28 years old, C potential, just uh, an okay option who's never been good for us at the major league level. So we will look to send him down through waivers. Now, we've already had one month where we were under 500. And so far here in the month of May, we only have a three and six record. A road trip here in Boston is not going well for us with a pair of one run losses. And we see Cincinnati has claimed Mason Miller off of waivers, but this is a revocable waiver request. Would you like to withdraw this waiver request now? Yeah, there are some complexities here in baseball that even I don't really fully understand at this point. I know there are revocable waivers and irrevocable waivers. So in this case, we could say, oh, just kidding, we want to keep him. But the alternative I think I like is to withdraw the waiver request and then just trade him. So I think I would like to trade Mason Miller then. We'll send him to the Boston Red Sox. And we're going to get a bit more catcher depth because we could have used that. Well, that's awkward. We just lost to the Red Sox. And do you want to know who picked up the victory by chance? Mason Miller got the start against us. Went six and two thirds, allowing one run. He gets the victory despite our comeback effort with five in the eighth inning. So this trade is already aging like milk. And we lose a series to Boston, and we've now lost six of our last seven. I wanted to take a look at some of our splits and see if we need to make some changes to our left-handed lineups. So here are the players doing best against lefties, and that would be Dylan Carlson, Denzel Clark, Max Muncy. Miguel Vargas is actually hitting lefties pretty well. A lot better than he's hitting righties. So if we wanted to platoon him right now, that would be an option. Susak, Geloff, all doing a pretty good job against lefties. For some reason, Aaron Don has 93 contact against righties, 59 contact against lefties, yet is hitting lefties significantly better. Wow, Vladimir Guerrero is only hitting 161 against lefties right now. So that's why his numbers are trending way down like that his stats are Trey Sweeney okay I guess I haven't let him play against lefties very much he's 0 for 6 on the year so what I'm gonna do here in this situation is I'm still gonna take Don out against lefties right now because we can play Baez 
give Don a little extra rest. He can come off the bench in those games. Hopefully he gets better against righties. Like, there's no way I expect this trend to maintain. But I think given the way Sweeney's played this year, we need to start getting him some more action against lefties. We can't just deal with this weakness forever. Let's see if he can start to play better. I know Muncie is hitting lefties right now, but I want to get Sweeney some of those at-bats just to see if he can improve. And I saw that Dylan Carlson was one of our most reliable hitters against lefties right now, so I'd like to move him up a bit. But I guess I had Carlson playing in left against left-handed pitching. We're going to swap uh, him back to right field. Vargas can go back to left field in that case and then Muncie won't be losing all these ABs he'll just get him at second base why don't we get into our first game action of the day we're in the ninth inning against the Chicago White Sox down one to nothing but the tying run is in scoring position and it's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. who will hit with Aaron Don a hit from tying the game There's a fastball in there from Lambert. Strike one. Carlson is on deck. Trying to attack inside. It really should be ahead 0-2. Oh, he just missed it. Deep down the left field line and foul. Jimmy throwing everything inside here to Vladdy. One and two. Now he goes outside. Tough take. Ah, oh, chase the high fastball. And that's going to bring up Carlson. Now we've got to get a hit. On the ground. It gets through. Here comes Don. Sprinting around third. He ties the game. Dylan Carlson coming through clutch. Got that first pitch curveball and had to go after it. Did it again, but a better curveball this time from Lambert. So we've got to get somebody warm for the 10th now, unless there is no 10th inning. Uh-oh. So they've got two lefties coming up and a switch hitter who might just be better off being a full-time lefty. So do we bring in one of these lefties? They aren't fully rested. I think I'm just going to stick with Acevedo here if it comes down to the 10th inning. Meanwhile, the 0-2 is delivered high. Trey is hitless on the day. 2-2 two and two from Lambert. And it's in the air, center field. And a routine play is we'll go to extra innings like so many of these critical situations have lately. Domingo Acevedo making his 10th appearance of the season. He's done a really good job, but now in this setup role, he has surrendered a few leads. He has three blown saves. And now with a runner at second base, we'll see if he can get Oscar Colas. That's right down the middle for a strike. On the ground, pass Sweeney. It'll be first and third for Chicago with nobody down. Now, there isn't a great deal of speed there at third base. So a ground ball in the infield might not score him. Houston Gonzalez. I could use that strike call. There we go. Good changeup delivered by Acevedo. He's doing a good job this year with runners in scoring position. We want to be careful. And maybe we're being a little too careful now. Three and one, Benintendi on deck, and he's off to a scorching start to the season. And he'll bat with the bases loaded and nobody out. Was the right call to bring in Reyes instead. Bases juiced for Benintendi. There we go. On a ground ball, we're looking to see if we can get the out at home first. Two strikes. Did he go around? Yes, he did. Strike three on Benintendi. 
A big first out for Acevedo, but now you wish there was a base open to walk this guy. It's Luis Roberts. And I love to throw the slider here, but he's not feeling his slider right now. I cannot risk him leaving that over the plate. I've got to go fastball change up in this at bat. And we're luckily grazing some of these corners. And strike two. I feel okay now throwing the slider away. Do not make me regret this. All right, that's a decent pitch. How'd he take that? Two and two on Robert. Got him looking. Strike three. Two big strikeouts for Acevedo. And now Gavin Sheets. Jeez, this lineup seems to have so much production across the board right now. Sheets is having a great year. Base is still loaded. Strike one delivered. And a drive deep to right. You've got to be kidding me. A grand slam for Gavin Sheets on a fastball away in the zone. I can't believe he just homered off that. And he nailed his spot too. Like, that's the pitch I wanted. Usually you pull that ball, you're not muscling it out. It only goes 347. That's one of the shortest home runs I think I've seen in this game. We were so close to getting out of that jam. And now down four. Hammered by Vargas and drilled to the left field seats. It is gone. And suddenly a two-run game for Oakland on Vargas. Fourth homer of the season. Well, that's a fantastic way to start this inning. Now can we get a base runner? You know, you go into these ninth innings all the time where you're down two and you feel like you got a chance, and that's the situation we've basically created now. Geloff is the batter. Jimmy Hergett is in the game. And we've got to be ready for a little less velocity here. Got to sit back a tick. Strike two. Three and two as he misses high. Daniel Susak is on deck. And the 3-2 is hammered foul. We try it again. Lifted right field. Not even moving. Out number one. I think in this spot you've got to bring Soderstrom into the game. 29 RBIs on the season. He's hitting 303. Right now, it's hard to argue against him being our MVP in Season 5. Ball one taken inside. And now nearly hitting him. He does get ahead in the count. 3-0. and oh. Max Muncy is on deck, and then Aaron Don. We'll see if anyone's left on this bench. 3-0 green light. This just late contact. I don't know why, just that, that timing is what feels right and not the couple of milliseconds earlier that would be good. Already behind 0-2, it's Muncy. But we're battling back. 3-2 and two now to Muncy with Aaron Don on deck. Can we extend this game a little bit longer? Ball four, and Don will hit. Aaron Don now hitting 213. One for three on the day. Does he have a little magic in him here tonight? Lifted foul. And a low sinker taken for strike two. Probably going to look at contact swings now. 
and it hits him. Don will reach. He represents the tying run. And now you get Luis Arise, who has six homers on the year and 22 RBIs. Herget's now thrown 24 pitches. Ball one taken away. Ball two now, and no one's going to move. Behind the rise is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. You've got to throw him strikes. Arise, base hit right field. Everybody stays put, and the bases are loaded with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. coming up to the plate. The White Sox put four on the board with their own grand slam in the top of the inning. And the A's have a chance now with Vladimir Guerrero. On the ground, knocked down. A run will score as Vladdy is thrown out. The run does not score. I thought he was going to reach on that. But even with a little misplay at third, the White Sox hold on for a win. We made a game out of it after all, and the Grand Slam was just too much to overcome. And it's disappointing given the recent stretch of games that we can't take that one. And majority of these losses are by one or two runs. We come back the next day, and we're trying to close this game out. The White Sox trail by one, and they have two on with two down. Alex Reyes, the star closer facing Brian Ramos, delivers a fastball for strike one. He missed it, strike two. And struck him out on three pitches. The A's win this one, at least. And they end this little losing skid. Vargas, Juan Guerrero, and Trey Sweeney all hit homers in this game. Behind a Joe Michael 7-2 third inning, 11 strikeout performance. We'll take a quick break to check on our scouting, and we have wrapped up another report on Trey Robeson. He is a first baseman who's going to come in 80th on the board right now. 81 to 86 potential. He is a contact first first baseman who doesn't play the best defense. So I consider him to be an option maybe with our third or fourth selection. We're also scouting a lot of outfielders and trying to find more first basemen in the West, which doesn't appear to be going all that well. Manny Reyes continues to fly up the board. He comes in 20th right now. The switch hitter has a lot of offensive skill. That future projection, too, on his discipline is promising. Reyes is going to be a very sought-after prospect for me. i like to get the report done for Kenny Sparbori, who looks to be another option for us with one of our first two selections. I want to wrap up the profile as well for Darren Delahanty, who is still in the top six on our board. But I found Gustavo Gonzalez really intriguing as well. And he's outside the top 100 on both boards. But he does have some power as a lefty. Doesn't project to have great defense, but could be a late round bat to be interested in. We do end up winning this series against the White Sox, thankfully. And get to enjoy more of this homestand. Looks like Waldachuk got a bit shaken up. And we'll see if he ends up missing a start or not. It's three consecutive victories, though, as we beat the Yankees at home, 8-3. Arise, Sweeney, and Air Nyes all go yard. I don't know. It kind of seems like as a, a home run hitting team, we are continuing to maintain it. Let's take a look here. I know we were tied for fifth earlier. Now we're more league average. Okay. Which is, you know, I hope we can stay in that range. Ooh, we are blowing him out in this one, and Geloff's going for a cycle. We'll see if he can get it. Already up 7-1, to one. Luis Gill is the pitcher. Base is loaded, and this is a good spot to maybe try and get your triple. If a ball is getting thrown somewhere else, you might get a triple uncontested that you otherwise wouldn't. 
but you gotta find a gap somewhere. I'm thinking right off that right center wall, bouncing towards center field. Strike two on Geloff. Swung right through that slider, so it's two and two from Gill. Got a piece of it. Popped him up, and we got a really good pitch to hit. So no cycle here, so unless he hits again in the eighth inning. On the ground, and Geloff crosses the line and makes the play. So no cycle for Geloff, but a good homestand being put together with another series victory. We drop our next game by one run. Mitch Keller has a shutout going. We're going to simulate this one to the end. And I would like to play this Sunday matchup as we try to get back to 500 and win all three series on this homestand. Before that, here's our scouting progress for the week. And a lot of good stuff. Gustavo Gonzalez ends up coming in a lot higher on the board now, up to 88. And showing potential between 72 and 82. And then Darren Delahanty, 75 to 90, so that potential range is a little bit risky. His fielding looks pretty promising, his contact as well. We'll see if he ends up being one of our top options there. You got to make sure you're ready for your first round pick first and foremost. And we could use a little more data on some of these players, including Jesus Madrano. We should wrap that one up. I'm also intrigued here with Henry Estrada. I, I just happen to like the pitchers a bit more, it seems, in this range right now. And here's actually a prospect who comes in with some power, so I need to get some data on Robin Worley. He looks promising, even though outfield has uh, become one of the stronger projected position groups. I also like Bobby Turner, so I'll focus on the pitchers right now. They're all in different regions. So I'm doing a lot of individual scouting this year, just based on not finding enough guys all in the same region. Interesting. The AL West has been a really strong division throughout this franchise, but right now the Astros are the only team above 500. we We're here in second place. If the season ended today, looks like we'd be three and a half games out of a wild card spot. So... There aren't as many teams running away, you know, with great records right now. This feels like a year where everything's up for grabs if you can just take it. A little bit different lineup here today with Josh Baez playing in right. Dylan Carlson gets the day off. And we've got the New York Mets in the series finale. Ken Waldachuk's putting together a pretty good year, and I thought maybe he wouldn't be getting better any longer, but he has gone up to an 81 overall now with his success to start the season. And we'll lead off. This is Lester Flutie for the Mets. 375. That's on three hits. Flutie looks at a fastball on the outside corner, and we're underway. Orioles seeking trade help at center field. Those kinds of updates are so cool. So we're still playing around 500, but it feels like a positive episode overall. We've managed to win most of our series, and we have also seen Vargas and Don play a little bit better. I don't think we've faced too many lefty pitchers, so Josh Baez hasn't gotten many starts yet. But I wanted to get him in the game today. Full count here against Flutie. Grounded on to first base. Good slider for the first out. Brandon Nimmo. Oh, I loved hitting with him in the Rockies franchise. Strike on the outside corner from Waldachuk. 294 average, five homers. I'm seeing all the team updates down below for positions teams need. Like, everybody needs a catcher. I can't relate. We got one of the best right now this season. Strike two from Waldachuk. I've liked Soderstrom a lot at catcher. I feel like his defense has actually been pretty passable. Nimmo puts a charge behind one. Deep to center. Don with just enough space. And it's Jeff McNeil with two down. 
Again, nailing the outside corner is Waldachuk. And a ground ball that Sweeney cannot get to. And the Mets get their first base runner. Oh, they have a pretty good catcher here in uh, New York. It's Francisco Alvarez. Grounded on to Sweeney. And we make quick work of that at bat. Today, the Athletics will face Graham Ashcraft. 3.69 ERA making his 11th start. And his strikeout per nine innings is really low. He has 38 strikeouts in 61 innings. So let's go put the ball in play and see if we can continue to play good offense. Luis Arise is now hitting 293 on the season. And that is the second best average we got. Soderstrom is still in first place. Sweeney hitting 273. He's also up there. Headed the other way, and Arise drops in a base hit. Sometimes that late timing will work for you. But now Trey Sweeney, who enters with six homers on the year and 21 RBIs. He and Soderstrom together having nice steps forward. Swung on and missed as he falls behind Ashcraft, who doesn't strike out many hitters but has Sweeney one and two missing away. A full count now for Trey Sweeney, and he will walk to first base. Two on for Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who has nine homers on the year, so he would still be behind Tyler Soderstrom. And he gets ahead in the count now, two and zero. Oh. And there's the cutter. So he hits 100, but still hasn't found a way to get strikeouts yet. That felt like it was 170 miles an hour. I'm glad it didn't clip the outside because I had no shot of hitting it. Four straight cutters and a 3-1. Delivered outside for strike two. The payoff pitch to Guerrero. It is a base hit to center field. Arise is waved around, heading home to score the first run of the ball game. Guerrero comes through, and there is still nobody out. A little aggressive there sending Arise home, but had a good feeling he would score. Soderstrom, one-time All-Star, might be a two-time this season. Ten homers, so he has not gone yard yet in this episode. And he's currently first in all-star voting at the catcher position. One and one. Grounded. Up the middle. In the right spot to get nobody. Everybody's reached. And the bases are loaded for Gelos. No! Infield fly. Why can't I just speed that up? When I'm editing, for some reason, like, I can tell how late a lot of these swings are, but when I'm playing, I'm just swinging with the timing that feels right. Max Muncy, one down. That was late, too. Of course, it's 100 miles an hour. That's the entire idea of throwing 100 miles per hour in the first place. Gotta get in front of it here. Muncy. Swung through a slider. That was actually a decent swing. Nope, just late. Well, he's gone. Only getting one here would not feel good. But now two down. And Miguel Vargas. Good cutter on the outside. I'm going to have to see these cutters all day. There are a lot to handle. Two and two to Vargas. And he gets two strikeouts to close out the first inning. I don't think I've seen a pitcher yet in this game that just spams triple digit cutters every pitch. Good slur from Waldachuk. Unfortunately, did not get the call. Brett Beatty is the hitter. And that's strike two. 
Grounded for Guerrero. Another out for Waldachuk. Now facing the left fielder, Archie Hobson. He hits it to our left fielder. Out number two. They got Francisco Lindor hitting seventh. He's a 245 hitter this season. And he's hitting behind, I think, a lot of players that they've drafted in this series. I don't recognize a lot of this lineup. Right back to Waldachuk, and it's a good start to the day for him. Two scoreless innings. All right, Josh Baez, welcome back to the big leagues. I think he had uh, the exact start to the year we were hoping for, but we need to see him hit some big league pitching. And I've got to get used to this cutter because it's, it's intimidating, honestly. Ashcraft, 28 pitches in. Right by him at 100. He misses away, hitting 101. The count is full now on Baez. And that just froze me. We're going to fix that strikeout rate for him in one day. Aaron Don will hit now in the nine spot. And Don hits it softly into right center field, and it does drop in for a hit. That was a pretty good pitch to hit, and he didn't hit it all that hard, but we'll take a hit. Yeah, when you're getting pitches center cut, man, you've got to hit it harder than 71 off the bat. Here's a rise. Debating on running here. He's pretty quick to home plate. Into center field. And an easy play for out number two. A piece of this cutter and a 2-2 count. I think we will send Don here. Sweeney, 41st pitch. It's low and Don is safe at second base. He racks up his 13th stolen base of the season. And Sweeney trying to bring him home. Three and two. Ball four. So we're getting base runners in these first two innings. But we already left three aboard and now two on, two down. Hammer deep to left field. Sent back. And at the edge of the grass, the catch is made. It could be a lot more than one to nothing. Hey, it's the former A, Ramon Laureano. He's hitting 264. Uh oh. Left the change up, top of the zone, and Laureano reaches on a base hit. It is Mark Vientos, the nine hitter, and Waldachuk wastes no time in getting ahead 0 2. Come on, man. You got to swing at that. One, two. Lifted. He got jammed, and Baez makes the play. Nice change up from Waldachuk. He gets ahead of Lester Flutie. And it's a base hit to right on a good change up this time. Two on for New York. Now got to deal with Brandon Nimmo. Good slider from Waldachuk. He gets ahead 0-2. And struck him out. Nice change up from Waldachuk. He picks up his first. Waldachuk is around uh, seven or so strikeouts per nine innings. His control has felt really good in this start. He's been able to limit home runs and just keep everything under control. He's ahead of Jeff McNeil. This one is stopped by Soderstrom, and the out is at third base. Nicely done. We're through three with Waldachuk. That's hit hard. A sliding stop at short. Francisco Lindor, everybody. Now, 
50 pitches in now is Ashcraft, so I don't see him going very deep into this game. Over half of his energy bar is done, so I'm thinking five innings for him. Unless things start to speed up. Sent to center off the bat of Muncie. And the third is all wrapped up. This time a 1-2-3 inning. Well, the Chuck opens the fourth by falling behind Jeff McNeil. 3-1 pitch on the way is high. Ball four. Fouled off by Alvarez, but Waldachuk gets ahead 1-2. Oh, come on, man. A good slider away. But a strike three chasing the fastball. Left that one up, but Beatty just missed. And Baez has this one in foul ground. Yeah, I think that Kenny has come a, a long way in this series. I, I like where he's at now. And we'll see how long he stays in this rotation. I think we will see some change over the next couple of years. As more of these prospects come up. Cam Cope and Cole Phillips, two of the next. Oh, man, this strike zone has been so inconsistent. Two and two on Hobson. He got him looking. Sent to the gap by Miguel Vargas. This ball's back. It is off the wall. And Miguel Vargas checks in at second base with another extra base hit. You know, I find it difficult to gauge just how patient you need to be with certain players in this game. Felt like 140 at-bats in, that was enough. And all of a sudden, Vargas and Don starting to at least raise their play even slightly. Which feels really nice. We needed more out of this outfield on the offensive side. But now we've left five on base and we need to get Vargas home. Two and one. Ashcraft hasn't had the most consistent control. I'm really trying to be more selective as Baez looks to dump this down the line, but it does drift foul. And chase for strike three. Good slider. Well, it's Aaron Don's turn in that case. He is one for one with a soft single. And now a line drive that he hit a little bit harder for out number two. He's got a good line drive swing. I'm sure the results will come around eventually. The hope is that eventually he plays the role that Arise does as that top batting average guy and someone who's always on base and can deliver just sharp singles all over the field. Well, actually, Arise doesn't always hit the ball very sharply, but... He just puts the ball where they ain't, reliably. 63 pitches now for Graham Ashcraft. Really uh, hesitant on that pitch there. Ended up way late. And the count is even. This one is picked up at first base. And we strand another runner in scoring position. Pitch number 69 is away to Ramon Laureano. We'll see if we can get Waldachuk into the sixth inning. I think we'll use a lot of our lefties if they're fresh in this game. There are a lot of left-handed bats here in this Mets lineup. And strike three on the big cut by Laureano. And hey, Waldachuk's pitching so well, let's just keep throwing lefties at them until they show they can hit them. Two down now. And jam towards Baez. A run into foul ground. And that's another zero on the board. Yeah, just looking at the success of the team right now, I'm not sure there are any other changes that I feel are imminent. 
Don and Vargas are trending up, and now we have the seven-man bullpen and an extra outfielder. Daryl Ernais has struggled, so there is the possibility of sending him down to AAA and calling up an infielder. Sweeney on the ground and backhanded by Lindor. So Kevin Smith or Rebiel Angelis could come up for a bench roll, but that would really be it. I feel pretty good about the starting lineup at the moment and letting things just sort itself out. Deep to right by Guerrero and foul. Ashcraft ahead, two strikes. Misses with the cutter. He might get the sixth inning if this is a, a quick fifth overall. He does miss away, running the count full here on Vladdy. And this ball is belted! Deep left center! Go on a home run! Guerrero gets a hold of one for number 10 on the season. We finally get that big hit, but unfortunately, no one's on base this time. There is now a tie for the home run leader of the A's. Soderstrom and Guerrero each with 10 at this point. Surprisingly, no action right now in the Mets' bullpen. Ashcraft 77 pitches in. And that ball is scorched to first. Picked up for the out. We're starting to get some more hittable pitches. And I've looked at this cutter now at least 50 times. Starting to get a little more confidence hitting it. Zach Geloff. Looking at one that takes out home plate. Geloff 3-1. Jammed into right field. It falls in for a hit. Now there's action in the Mets bullpen. Cole Sands and Cole Irvin getting warm. Towards center field. Softly hit for a base hit. Two straight for the Oakland A's. And now the change is made, so no more 100 mile per hour cutters. And instead we're going to face Cole Sands. And he throws a much slower cutter. Miguel Vargas at the plate. Okay, that I should have looked at the first pitch here. A little too eager to swing right now. Sharply hit to third. Inning over. But we're playing a pretty good game right now, and we'll see if Waldachuk can complete six. He is low on energy. We are facing this lineup now for the third time. And he falls behind Lester Flutie 2-0. Hung that one, but it is a pop-up in shallow center for Don. Brandon Nimmo, the batter. Fouled off the fastball. One and two. He struck him out. One of his best slurves of the day, and it's strikeout number five. I'm happy if he gets us one more out. Jeff McNeil is the batter. Really good slider. He's been throwing these breaking pitches low and away to lefties very reliably. Trying again and just not getting a call because this has been the most inconsistent part of this umpire's zone. Two and one. And it's high. Three one to McNeil is also missing and now the tying run is at the plate. Francisco Alvarez. I'm going to leave Waldachuk in for this at bat. Fouled off on a fastball away. He reached out of the zone for it, and it's strike two. So close. One more strike is all he needs. Popped up, and it will reach the seats. 
taken low for ball three. Could be the last pitch of the day for Ken Waldachuk. Into right center field. It's down for a hit. Don finally gets to it on the track, but a run will score. And it's a 2-1 ball game. And that's going to be the end of the road here for Ken Waldachuk. All in all, a really good outing. And we're going to bring in Victor Gonzalez. Gonzalez making appearance number 17, and his numbers are not as good as they've been in years past. He faces Brett Beatty. We just need one quick out. Gonzalez cannot locate the zone. It's 3-0. Archie Hobson is on deck. There's a strike. Body missed away, and it's ball four. This inning has gone on long enough. Two on, two down, and a strike away to Hobson. The 2024 Rookie of the Year for the Mets. That's too high. Inconsistent control here for Gonzalez entering this game. And the 2-1 count. Base hit into right field. Baez will get it in. And the bases are loaded now for the Mets. And Gonzalez has to stay in at least one more hitter. And that hitter will be Francisco Lindor. Soderstrom's calling for a slider inside. I just don't trust it. I don't even know what to think right now. Someone else has to get warm, that's for sure. We'll put uh, Lerma in the bullpen, get him warm. And he hit him! Unbelievable! A sixth inning meltdown for Oakland. And that brings up Ramon Laureano with the game tied. The confidence just can't get a whole lot lower. I need to buy time. I can't let Gonzalez stay in this game. We got to bring in Marshall Lerma. And he's been reliable overall. He has struggled a bit more against lefties. So that is going to be two runs then charged to Ken Waldachuk. Obviously, I left him in a little too long. But I also trusted the bullpen to clean up the mess if things got out of hand. And, well, that has not happened, has it? Marshall Lerma just missing apparently want to leave this inning tied base hit at least two are gonna score Don throwing to the cutoff and Loriano's in with a double and it's a four run sixth for New York everything was going so well and now this inning just completely going awry. Luckily, we got him to go around there. One and two. Lerma misses. Let's try that cutter. Just off the inside corner. Count is full. And the bases are loaded again. The hitter is Lester Flutie. And I don't need another extra base hit right now. Lifted to the opposite side. Two strikes. Trying to put him away. And did he go? No, he didn't. Flutie, left center field. One run scores. Here comes another one. Why can't we get this offense out? When you think of the Mets, you don't think of runs being scored. And everything in this inning has come with two outs. Finally, 
but the damage is done on a six run sixth. What just happened? Do the A's have an answer? A four run game and four innings to clean this up. Baez hits it into center field, and the inning does start with a hit. Aaron Don has a single and uh, a line drive in this game, and we'll see if he can set the table for the top of this order. Wow, I'm not going to see a better pitch with Don. Been in front of those breaking pitches today. One and two. Just a piece of it, luckily. Gotta have a productive at-bat here. Gotta think at least one in this inning. Towards left center, Don drops it in. So we're not hitting the ball as hard as we'd like in some cases, but we're finding some space. And we got two on for Luis Ariz. We just can't be over-aggressive on low pitches here. Like that one, and again, that's been inconsistently called and leaning more towards a ball than a strike. It hits him, and the bases are loaded now for Trey Sweeney. Sweeney has drawn a pair of walks, and now we got a prime opportunity with nobody out in the sixth. That's a strike. Now you got to think about getting at least two in this inning. That splitter misses away. Taken low, not chasing the changeup. You can lay off the low stuff, I feel, today. Because a lot of that's not getting called anyway. Three and one to Sweeney. He's already taken two walks. He's not afraid to do it again. 3-1 from Sands. Line drive, base hit. A run scores and will keep the bases loaded. 6-3 ball game. And here comes Vladimir Guerrero. Was ready for a good fastball there, 3-1. Sent the other way. And the rally continues. Here is Vladimir Guerrero. And he lifts it out to center field. Don is set up. And he bluffs a tag to home. We still have another chance. But one down. Now it is Soderstrom. Ooh, that's one we need to turn on there. 11 hits on the day for the A's, but 8 left on base. This is sent to left field. Don is set up and he will head home. And the A's do get their two here in the sixth. 6-4 Six game. And now two on, two down for Zach Geloff. Big cut there out in front for strike one. Geloff has a single, a pop out, and a ground out. I wanted the turn on that, but I don't think I timed it up anyway. That was early. Suddenly 0-2. But taken away. Four slurves start this at bat. And a miss outside runs the count even. Struck him out. But the A's do get two back. It's pretty important now to put up a zero. Lerma is in there for the time being. He'll face Jeff McNeil. Good slider on the outside corner, although that's a ball given this umpire's zone. Popped up, and Geloff takes care of it. We'll make a pitching change now and bring in a fresh arm. It is Tyler Kinley, who has struggled against lefties, done well against righties, and he'll face Francisco Alvarez. There's a fastball. Alvarez had a big hit in that last sixth inning and now a big cut to fall behind. 
The 0-2 is popped up again for Geloff. Over towards the Mets bullpen for the second out. I can't believe he swung at that. Beatty behind, two strikes. Laid off that fastball. Sharply to Muncie. And, uh, no, he threw him off. Oh, he got the tag. All right, he saved Muncie from an error. Nice job, Vladdy. All right, can we get one more of those runs back now? Bottom of this A's lineup. Muncie Vargas Baez up this inning. Good change up there from Sands. Big slurve, strike three. Could be a quick one, two, three inning here for Sands. Two down, two strikes on Baez. But a drive in the air, deep to right field. It is gone! Josh Baez, opposite field, over the 15-foot wall and right. And the A's are back within a run. I was wondering who would be the first righty to go oppo to right field. I know it's not like the highest right field wall or anything. It's, it's just, you know, somewhat tough for righties to muscle them out there. You got to really hit one well, and Baez did. So now it's a 6-5 to five ball game. A fun rally here with the A's and runs in three consecutive innings. Base hit left field. Aaron Don is aboard. And there's really no reason to not try and steal with him. You know, if we end up leading off with a rise, if he gets caught, I'm okay with that. But I want to get him in scoring position if we can. And they time it up perfectly. So we get one back. And we'll head on to the eighth inning. Maybe that was a little too predictable. It's Domingo Acevedo entering the game. Hoping to keep the score where it is. That is a sharp one that gets through at 103. A hit for Archie Hobson. Runner takes off, but Lindor fouls it away. That is some pretty good speed there at first base. Strike three on the outside corner. Getting a pretty good lead there at first. Is there really any sort of strategy to like pickoffs, or do you have to just get lucky in terms of getting a guy actually picked? I'm usually pretty good at throwing picks. It's kind of what I'm known for, but in baseball it's more challenging. Three and oh. Laureano, two for three on the day, and that clips the inside edge. And he looks at strike two, so we've got ourselves a full count. But ball four. Pretty good speed there at second base. Acevedo, low to Vientos. Now we got him one and two. Just low. And now it's by him at 94, strike three. Lester Flutie is the batter. Two on, two away. Clip the inside. Acevedo does that so well. And for whatever reason, he gets the calls a little more than it seems other pitchers do for me. Fouled off, and he's ahead of Flutie. Struck him out. Nice way to end the inning for Domingo Acevedo. But the A's still trail 6-5 as we go bottom of the eighth inning. Luis Ariz leads things off. And we start with a base hit on a fastball over the plate. Do you consider at all running for Ariz here with him representing the tying run? I mean, that's what speed on the bench is for, right? We got 
77 speed we could put out there. I think we're going to make the move. Dale Arnaiz will run. And Trey Sweeney will hit. He's reached three times. Grounds it right back to Garcia. And it's a double play on another pitch that was left over the plate. They'll bring in a new pitcher. Matt Whistler will face Vladimir Guerrero. He delivered our first two RBIs of the day. Two down now in the eighth. I don't know why they made the change there. Garcia had only thrown like six pitches, if that. Big cut as we're out in front and the count even. That one is in the air. Hit well to left field. And it's caught in front of the wall. Nearly tied the game. We bring in the rookie Alfonso Montez in the ninth inning. And he'll face Brandon Nimmo. A 6-5 game that started off as more of a pitcher's duel. We had our pitcher doing great, and Ashcraft was, you know, pitching around base runners. And then suddenly, a six-run effort by the Mets, and then we start to uh, find our stride offensively. A tale of two games here in Oakland. 0-2. Oh Struck him out. Waved at by McNeil, and now Montez has him behind in the count. And struck him out! Taking care of two of the best Mets lefties. But now a lefty masher in Francisco Alvarez. He's one for four. Delivered outside for strike one. And that one is blown by him. He reached back for 96. And the one, two from Montez. Fouled back off of Soderstrom. Struck out the side. Bottom nine. Here we go. Uh oh. Is he still a Met? I'm worried. Oh, boy. But he's not having a good year. Edwin Diaz is 15 of 20 in save opportunities with a 7.4 ERA. Tyler Soderstrom leads us off as fans get off of their seats in the ninth inning. A's down one. Third baseman's hugging the line. Soderstrom looks at ball one. So Diaz is tied for fourth in saves this year in the National League. Sir Anthony Dominguez is number one. Ball two to Soderstrom. And he missed again, but got a call. Two and one for Edwin Diaz. Grounded up the middle and through a base hit. And Soderstrom, representing the tying run, has reached. But can the hitters behind him come through in the clutch? Geloff, Muncy, Vargas are all next. Geloff is one for four. And that's a 102 mile an hour fastball. Fouled off a slider that should have been let go. And now an 0-2 count on Zach. Blown by him at 103. Here is Max Muncy. He's one for four as well. Has a single. Diaz starting to find his groove. Another 0-2 count. Base hit left field. Muncy has put the winning run on base. He just caught too much of the plate with this slider. If he keeps that away, it's really hard to deal with. But now two on for the A's. And that brings up Miguel Vargas. 
Vargas hit a rocket for a double back in the fourth. Otherwise, he's one for four. Nope. That hasn't been called a strike today. And now it is. Like, can we get just a consistent zone, please? No, 103, man. It's so hard to hit 103. Two strikes on Miguel Vargas. Struck him out. Couldn't even foul it off. And who's it going to come down to? Josh Baez just called up two for four on the day has an opposite field home run of course it comes down to Josh Baez two on for Oakland and now by him at 97 on a very hittable pitch and again at 101 didn't chase the slider this time he tried again. The count is evened up. Ball three. And now the runners will leave early. Soderstrom has all right speed there at second base. And he missed high. The bases are loaded for Aaron Dunn. From an 0-2 count. We draw a walk against Edwin Diaz. And now Aaron Dunn, who is three for four and avoided being sent down thanks to everybody in the chat, everybody in the comments, delivering some key feedback. Pitch 21 from Edwin Diaz. Upstairs. Why? Why? Fouled back at 100. What was timing? Oh, it's so hard to be on time. One and two. Got him! Yeah, now it's a strike. And the Mets take care of this series 6 5. So close. We rally late, but we're a hit shy. And the Mets win it in a really, really frustrating loss. We just couldn't get out of that sixth inning quick enough. They put six on the board. And we spend the next few innings clawing back just to come that close. A 5-4 and four homestand, though, for the A's and 2-1 series. We'll take it. We're close to wrapping up the month of May, and these losses, unfortunately, follow us to Cleveland, where we get swept. The A's are now in third place in the American League West and 10 games out of first with a 26-31 record. We've seen our team batting average fall significantly to 24th in baseball, while our home run numbers continue to fall further now we're 18th and what's our on base looking like 20th the offense is slumping a bit right now looking at our pitching we're 10th in hits allowed that's good and in runs allowed we're 16th so maybe average pitching, below average offense, and a 26-31 and 31 record is what we have. Aaron Don is hot now suddenly, 246. So we are seeing more development, but still the, the negatives to contact right and power right. Yusniel Cruz is hitting 321 down at AA. Still seeing power go down, but everything else is going up. Probably going to get moved up to AAA shortly, I'd have to think. Soderstrom is seeing a little bit of development. Trey Sweeney, not a lot. I love seeing this, though, for Josh Baez. Just across the board, his offense has improved this year. He's only 23. He can still get a whole lot better. And he's only played 210 big league games. 
It doesn't help right now that Soroka, Michael, and Keller are not in their best form at the moment. Soroka has a 4.36 ERA, and the home run has become a major problem this year. It's a little bit up from last season. Joe Michael is seeing some development. He's an 89 overall. He has not given up many home runs, but he's just giving up too many hits, it looks like. No major concerns right now with Michael. His advanced numbers look good. Mitch Keller, meanwhile, he's been mediocre. Here's your weekly Miguel Cabrera update, and he's actually gotten into a cold streak. The average is down to 280. I like seeing his power on the rise. And now plus two durability, so that's up a little bit faster, it seems, compared to last season. Now a 37 on base and slugging still look awesome. Now, one of the reasons why Juan Guerrero has stuck to the active roster is because he's the only one who can back up first base right now. But if we wanted to make a move, Avon Melendez has hit really well this year at AAA. Unfortunately, his power is trending in the wrong direction, but he would be an option. But right now, I think I want to keep Guerrero up for the time being and see if Melendez can get a little more development. He has 10 extra base hits. We'd like to see a little more. Down at the AA level, we got Luis Crespo hitting 300 plus, and his power is also moving in the right direction. Julian Rodriguez is hitting 263. Seems to be doing a lot of his damage against lefties. Yusneel Cruz is hitting 321. And he is seeing plus four to his discipline. So he must be drawing a fair amount of walks. But his power has been going down, unfortunately. Now, what are the circumstances that would lead Cruz to being called up this year? To me... Given our roster, we're not a team that I think traditionally would be buyers at the deadline and make a big move that way. I think more so we're the type of team where if we're in a good position and somebody else in our spot would think about buying, we would instead look to bring up a guy like you, Sneel Cruz. But what happens if it's later in the year and we're like five games under 500 at the deadline? Is there any need to bring up Cruz? Is there a need to get him on the roster in September just to see where he's at? Or do you wait it out? That's not a situation I've been thrown into very much, so I'm not sure yet how I'm going to handle that. So overall, it's been a very up and down season, back and forth, and we haven't really found our stride yet as we are approaching the end of May. June's going to be a big month. Are we going to be able to put together a couple good winning streaks and put us in a good position going into the All-Star break? Or is this going to be just an inconsistent season from top to bottom? So far, Season 5, a little disappointing overall. But that is going to do it for this episode, everybody. Leave your thoughts down below. With this team somewhere in the middle right now, what do you think about... The rest of the season going forward and what our focus should be. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next episode. Have a great day.